This video briefly describes some of the design elements used in the project. First we'll talk about the mechanical design elements shown basically at the top of the screen here and then we'll go into a little bit of the electronic design. This first item is a two-bladed turbine that snaps onto the flywheel of the Stirling engine. It has dovetail features on the rim to allow it to be clamped on with a little clamp. The dovetails are symmetrical to keep the turbine balanced. The purpose of the turbine was to push air and make the flywheel generate enough thrust to have the whole Stirling engine rotate on a turntable. However, two blades were not enough. The next item is a little dovetail clip used to secure the turbine to the flywheel. These clips are a tight fit and they have no tendency to slip. There's an extra clip opposite the, the clamping clip just to balance out the uh, turbine. Since the two-bladed turbine didn't provide enough thrust, I designed one with six blades to see how that would work. It has the same dovetail principle as the previous two-bladed design. The dovetail portions actually get in the way of adding more blades. This version almost provided enough thrust to keep the whole Stirling engine rotating on the turntable. I had to go back to the drawing boards and create a 12-bladed turbine to see if I could get some more thrust out of it. There's not a lot of room for a larger turbine and even on this design you can see some notches in the blades which are there to allow the pistons to uh, operate in that space. This design just has a tiny little slot in the rims so that it can be slid over the connecting rods and onto the flywheel. Next up is an arm that I built to house a fan so that it could provide thrust to turn the Stirling engine on the turntable. And this fan would be driven by the generator that uh, the Stirling engine is running. So still self-contained but this time electrically driven. It didn't have quite enough thrust either. This is another flywheel attachment. It has two pockets for weights at either side to add mass to the flywheel. The extra mass was to see if the heavier flywheel would smooth out the vibration in the whole Stirling engine. This helped, but I thought that adding a lot more mass might reduce the lifespan of the engine. The masses that I added were actually little LED persistence of vision modules, which can create visual patterns using persistence of vision as the flywheel rotates. This design element is just a little speaker cone. It was designed to turn the little surface audio driver into a speaker. The driver element just attaches to the small flat surface at the bottom. It turns out that the cone is a little wobbly and it has all kinds of its own resonant frequencies. So it made a pretty poor speaker in the end. This next item is the chassis for the electronics module that has the circuitry for all the sensors. The square holes in the bottom are just to save a little plastic. This end has a hole for the power connector. This hole is for the vibration sensor connector. And there are three holes for the thermocouples on the other side. All the cables come out the top and go towards the Stirling engine. All of the excess sensor cable just gets stored underneath the module. Next we'll talk a little bit about the circuitry. This circuit just takes the power from the generator and feeds it through a bridge rectifier and a filtering capacitor. This is needed because the Stirling engine can run in either direction and generate reverse voltages. This circuit is an amplifier for the Electret microphone. It has an adjustable gain with the P2 potentiometer. This is the main sensor circuit. Over on the left we have three thermocouple signal conditioning chips from Maxim. And just beside that 
we have the display which is an SPI LCD display the microcontroller is in the middle almost all of its pins are used just to the right of that I've replaced the hall sensor with the vibration sensor and in the upper right is the current monitoring circuit from ZTEX in the lower right we have a 3.3 volt regulator which can withstand at least a 10 volt input this is needed because the generator can generate 7 or 8 volts which exceeds the voltage rating of the regulator on the MCU module this is what it looks like when it's running its display from the USB programming connector on the microcontroller module when it's powered this way the current shows zero because the current is not going through its monitoring circuit note that the voltage reading has 0.4 volts added to it to account for the bridge rectifier which is a shot key bridge rectifier and I measured its voltage drop at 0.4 volts there was custom electronics in the test wiring setup but these were the main elements.